So puffy. They are very puffy, yes. <laughs> but if just for, I'm just going to be making toes at first. So just to the rundown on how to do that. If you follow along with my comic tutorial, this is the paper pattern I'm going with. Um, this is just the basic toe shape, and here's the base that you'll leave open. And I just take my thin foam, draw it out, you know, two for each toe, and I'm going to, these are going to be four toed feet. So and I'm just going to be doing that. I only have, you know, two left to do those, on one foot. Those or are on like the other. Costco shoes. Are those Costco shoes? They're Goodwill shoes. Hey, that, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rad. Well, folks, welcome to Fermedia. Uh, we provide you with a voice and a social connection with furries from around the world. My name is Space. I'm joined by my lovely host, Unya. And we welcome you guys to this evening's show. Um, in the background, we have our wonderful guest, Moths, or also known as Mothsicles. You've seen her in the chat. And now you get to see her on the show. Um, once in a while, uh, we get to have our guests come on, or we get to see have our, have our uh, people in chat come on to our show themselves. Um, Motskulls is uh, one of a kind where they're an artist, but they're also... Ooh, what's that noise? What noise? Oh, it sounded like a flamethrower. Maybe I'm just... I've been hearing a lot of weird things lately. I thought I've heard people like say my name all day long. But that could be just because I was just like, I went for like three hours without water today. And I'm just like, who said my name? <laughs> and I'm like, oh. and I'm like, wait, I'm in my car. Never mind. <laughs> um, so anyways, <laughs> so she's a fursuit builder and she's a really good fursuit builder. And um, as you can see here in the background, I like to call these fawn fursuits. I don't know what you call them. Do you call them something else? They're just fawn legs. Okay, fawn legs. Satyr legs. Or I like to call them uh, like uh, cosplay for for legs. There you go. <laughs> Whatever uh, you want them to be. <clears throat> They're kind of fun. Um, so these will be kind of playing in the background, and I may move uh, the Skype around so you guys can see the different images in the background. These are <laughs> images and pictures of work that she's done in the past, or pieces that she's currently dib um in recent um what are you forming right now what is this, is this in my hand yeah this is a toe that's a that's a big toe oh yeah well you gotta have big feet if you have a big head <laughs> that's that's true that's true <laughs> if you had tiny feet and a big head and you're just like oh, how do i hold this up so um before we go into asking you some questions we have some big news some really big news. I'm going to kind of cover up the screen here. This one. Uh, where is it? Boom. Covering up big news. I'm covering up some big news, but don't worry. I'm going <laughs> to drag a tiny little picture. Well, it's actually not going to work that way. So, some big news. Punya, what's the big news? Big news is that we, for media, have just hit a major milestone. We have hit over 5,000 likes on Facebook! <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I think we can actually update that we've hit a milestone on Facebook. My, my, they've ooh. given us a milestone, but I want to make artwork for it first because I don't want to just be like, milestone, and then just have like a regular post. So <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of lame. Yeah. <laughs> you just post like some... some Random stock image photo of a rock and be like, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> like the Peanuts character. I got a rock. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I got it's a milestone. <laughs> I got a milestone for Easter. <laughs> <laughs> so 5,000 likes is a big deal for us. Uh, we started oh, in... Let's see. We're at 2016, so... When did we start for media? Uh, it was either, oh gosh, it's either 2013 or 14. I think it was 13, wasn't it? 13. So we've been going for three years and mm -hmm. we're at 5,000 now. We've worked really yes. hard to get there. So Good progress, guys. It is big for us. So 5,000 likes to hit that. Woo -woo! I'm super excited. Thank you, Felix, <laughs> for liking our photo, but 
<laughs> it doesn't really count because you're my future husband, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> future husband in four weeks. <laughs> so um, it's a major milestone, and we, we, we treat every milestone. It usually goes every 500 or so. Um, I don't know how it is on Twitter. I don't have my phone. Oh, my phone's on the bed. Let me see what Twitter's given us. Twitter's another big one, too, and so is Fur Affinity. Um, so whenever we hit a milestone, we like to celebrate it. And apparently, we are also very responsive to our messages on uh, Facebook as well. So that's always a plus. And I guess that we're, that tells all of our um, our fans, too. So when they message us, it tells them we're also responsive. <laughs> so that's good. We I acknowledge guess. you. So I always I'm I'm always like surprised um when people message us and I always forget there's an automated message in there because I don't know when I'll get, when I can get to it right away and it says thank you for messaging for media. We'll get to you as soon as we can. Um usually like within the next few hours or so and it's like wait, who messaged this person? And I'm like, "Oh wait, that was me, but that's an automated <laughs> message." <laughs> so and I'm like Oh wait, that's right. Only like two of us have access to this. <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't someone else. Um let's see, let's just go ahead and if we're checking milestones, let me just check um let me just check real quick. Boopy doop. Um uh, oh goodness. Twitter, nothing major. We just have seventeen hundred followers. That's we probably hit a milestone at 1500 a long time ago so no big deal on that one <laughs> yeah, no big deal <laughs> whatever but still yay okay. <laughs> um and then i guess on for affinity we hit a milestone a long time ago i'm sure we're at actually we're at 1500 and we're six away from 1600 so that's another milestone so that's a pretty good one too um, but you could also help someone to hit a milestone if you go ahead and watch their page which is Mothsicles Suits which is the person that's making her first suit here on the camera woot woot <laughs> <laughs> it did, she, did you say spread the word spread it and bread it <laughs> you know it <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look. So this is your most recent suit, isn't it? The the moth? Yes, that's my most recent suit. Talk about that suit. That is a character I actually made up to have a matching insect character with my girlfriend. She actually had a bug suit before me, which is the jumping spider that you were mentioning before we started. And um, she is a mini spotted tiger moth. And that is, of course, the second insect I've made. And honestly, really in different species like that, like insects and dinosaurs are what I really get into when I make suits versus like dogs and cats. So I had a, a lot of fun with her and I hope to make more bug suits for people in the future. You really don't see a whole lot of them around, but just every once in a while when you do run into, you know, say somebody's bug persona, it's just... It's so cute. <laughs> Moths have always been a cute, I guess, animal to me. I've never found them to be ugly or scary in any way. Oh no, I'm, I mean, I feel the same. But um, I, it still hasn't grown as much as I would have liked to see. Um, but the whole, I guess, we'll say the whole bug community of the furry fandom is very slowly increasing. The swarm. The Which, swarm is coming. <laughs> yeah, the swarm. <laughs> Which I guess is a good thing, though, because that, it allows people to branch out. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm about to really just drop a, a jar of... Mayonnaise? Yeah. I was going to say drop a bomb, but I don't want to <laughs> have that. Careful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have the, uh, what do you call it? The FCC on my bum. <laughs> um, drop a jar of mayonnaise on the wolves and the foxes here, but it's kind of almost overdone at this point. Everyone's a gray wolf and everyone's a red fox. So, but you never really see, like, you know, uh, I'm assuming this is a reindeer in the background. It was, 
yeah, it was just a deer, not a reindeer. Uh, that's an older one of mine, but I made it as a pre-made just because I had a lot of blue fur laying around. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you never see those as often, and you never see, like, uh, kind of, like, tropical animals or tropical birds. Mm-hmm. So, like, toucans. And My you favorite. N- toucans are really pretty. So you never see, like, enough birds. Um, you never see enough bugs. So, like, you never really see people explore those kinds of um, areas, which would be really kind of nice to see more mm-hmm. of. And that's what I like to do. Um, I actually have a discount list for any future commissioners in my journals, typically, where I'll have a list of different species or ideas that I will make with uh, a certain amount of money discounted from them if they commission with that species. Rad. So the last one I did was uh, an opossum was on that list and a parrot hybrid was on that list. And they took both of those discounts, got a double discount, and got a harlequin macaw mixed with an opossum. Oh, oh wow! She said a Harley, <laughs> a Harley Quinn macaw. Yes. Rad. <laughs> it it it's, was fun. It was hard, but it was so fun. I've never even thought of um, hybriding, like, a fictional character into a fursuit. I've never even oh, thought of that. No, it's not um oh. Harley Quinn as in the character. A oh. Harley Quinn macaw is a real species. Oh. Actually. Yeah. But now you've got me thinking, though. <laughs> like you see, Deadpool furries running around. But think about it, though. Like, what if you could, like, like hypothetically think about it, hybrid a fictional character like Wolverine, like the actual Wolverine, into a bear. Not a Wolverine. No, because that'd be kind of like lame. That would be expected. <laughs> Or like a Wolverine into, oh, what's what would be the most ridiculous thing? Uh, into a snake, which would be a weird. Co- it would be a weird fursuit to begin with, because snakes don't have legs. It would just be like a snake with claws, but only his. They would be little teeny ty- tiny T Rex paws, like way up high, with really long claws. <laughs> oh my god. Someone said a furry Deadpool would be kind of cool to see. <laughs> I've a, seen multiple of those. A bat Batman. <laughs> and Robin uh, Robin. Oh my god. Robin, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so much fun. I would love to see these crossovers so badly. It needs to be done. Um, so questions for you. How long have you... Uh, we'll, we'll ask the generic questions for you. How long have you been in the fandom? Probably about eight years. I started making fursuits about the same time I realized what a furry was and officially joined the fandom. I was probably a furry longer than I considered myself in the fandom, though. So about eight years, yeah. Okay. And how many, well, do you have one fursona or do you have multiple fursonas? I have one fursona and then multiple characters. My fursona is Rory. She is a border collie mixed with a white-bellied kike, which is a type of parrot. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, I was pronouncing it wrong from a couple years until my friend told me the correct, but I don't know which one I said. But a kike. It's a parrot. So a parrot dog. Okay, so what did you just do there with your toe? <laughs> <laughs> I, took the, I took the two ends that I glued together and I stuffed the bottom of it and then I took an extra piece of foam I had laying around and glued the opening shut so there's a piece of foam at the bottom that keeps the stuffing in and that's okay. like the bottom of the toe okie dokie that looks cool mm. so that's one toe right there folks one toe One's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> One is the loneliest number that you ever knew. <laughs> what did you say about Creepster? I said, you poor unfortunate creature with just a single toe. <laughs> <laughs> um, how many... Let me think here. 
Let's see. Well, what got you um, into making suits? Is, did you know that was something that you wanted to do like when you got into the fandom, or was it something that you just eventually came across and was like, oh, that, that would be a really great idea? It was, I guess it's kind of a mixture of both. In When I was in middle school, I really wanted to have a really cool werewolf costume. And so I went to YouTube and looked up, you know, werewolf costumes and tutorials and whatnot. And I came across beast cubs and mm. her, her quad suits. And I was like, I'm going to do that and it's going to be awesome. And then I did it and I was like, it's awesome. But then two years later, I was like, that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then um, after beast cub, that she, I guess, introduced me to what quad suits were, but not to what furries were. Um, Eno is actually the person that made me figure out what fursuits were, because mm -hmm. she had the first tutorial on how to make a foam base head many, many years ago, and that's how I, I followed that tutorial to make my first fursuit, and after I started, then I deviled into the art, and I was like, well, I've been drawing this already. So, it was a mixture of me wanting to make a costume that I guess wasn't a fursuit, ended up making a fursuit, and then discovered what fursuits were, and then I was like, well, I guess I'm a furry. <laughs> well, here I am. <laughs> it was like that. Um, I just got four toes done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out the placement of them on my shoe where I want them to be, and I'm going to glue them on, making sure that the flat is still oh. flat with the bottom here. <laughs> Which usually takes a second. But that would be this one. I'm going to pull up that picture here. Boop -a doop Right here. All right. Um, yeah. While Mothsicles uh, does that. You're going to go pee? Uh, then, no. <laughs> while she figures out the placement of her toes. Why don't we just do um, a quick uh, 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 revamp about what we're we're doing wow. here. So... Any latecomers will know <laughs> what we're talking about. Okay. Um, so, folks, what we're talking about today is we are doing fursuit building. And it's one of the first... It's actually one of the things that we're going to be featuring this year is fursuit building. And we're going to build them up into different segments throughout the year. And tonight's show, uh, we're learning how to make fursuit feet paws. And as uh, Moths Coles actually told me... Um, a few months ago, and I was just like, I don't care. We're doing it. Um, she was like, you know that fursuit feet paws are one of the hardest ones to do. Um, you could just make like a tail or something. That would be pretty easy. And I'm like, I like a challenge. So, <laughs> um, so we're making fursuit feet paws tonight. And Motsicles in the background is building those. Uh, well, is going to build a foot and is building toes right now. So um, what we're doing right now is uh, she's building those in the background. We're asking her questions. Um, I'm occasionally throwing up instructions or um, other things, or I might pull up a page here, or we'll show you pictures of the background of um, suits that she's work on, worked on in the past. So that's what we're doing at the moment. Yes. So um, <clears throat> also we also have um, the instructions available on... Um Facebook. So if you guys want to <clears throat> swipe those and make your own feet paws, please, we encourage you to do so. And if you do, we would love to see photos of your final creations. Yes. We are going to be doing a follow up episode um, a week before we head out to Biggest Little Fur Con. And then I will actually be debuting. So we'll, our follow up episode will be showcasing our or my finished feet paws here. And then I'm actually going to show you the designs that Punya designed for me. And I got to make sure that I come <laughs> as cl close as I can to the ones that she came for, or she designed for me. Um, and then I'm actually going to be taking my finished pieces, whatever I have. I don't care if they're the cr craziest or the crappiest looking feet that I've ever designed. I'm going to be debuting these feet paws at Big's Little Fur Con for our how to dance panel at Biggest Little Fur Con with Telephone, uh, Ronnie Callon, and Tear. So <laughs> it'll be fun. Um, and if they fall apart, oh well. <laughs> but but that's but that's that's the that's what I'm gonna be doing. So that's 
<laughs> what? You'll knock your own socks off. I'm pretty much. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Those are big toes, man. I didn't realize how big the toes were. Yeah, you you gotta have them big if you have a big head. And with my style in particular, they're not huge fursuit heads, but they're big enough to where you gotta even at your feet with your head. Now, see, I know exactly what you're talking about because um, there was one year where I could not find one of my feet paws. And it just killed me because... <laughs> I don't know. To me, it just looks so weird to see me as Punya and then have just shoes on because my feet look so tiny mm -hmm. and disproportionate. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen people have um, those slipper sneakers that can work, but even then sometimes they're too small unless they can custom made. Mm -hmm. But with the, with the toes, they look really big now, but you're also going to bulk up the shoe later so it won't be like skinny foot, big toes. <laughs> you don't now, want that when, either. When you um, say bulk up the shoe, do you, are you, do you work with foam around them, or are you just going to put like the fur right on top, and, like slip it over? I put foam over the whole shoe. No shoe should have any visibility on it except for the bottoms. So, what? This is half inch foam. I'll take one inch foam and bulk up this part, you mm -hmm. know, all around. Once I get the toes on. Now, something I was actually discussing with friends um, over the weekend, because I was talking to them about making fursuit feet paws, and they made a really good point too. And you made a good point about this, I, I believe, um, folks. We selected, or um, the reason we have fitness or running shoes for fursuit feet paws. There's a reason for it. Because when you're walking around in a fursuit, you want to be comfortable. A lot of fursuit makers and a lot of people make the mistake of doing slippers or, as I like to call them, like, um, sailboat shoes. Because they're the kind of shoes you would wear on a sailboat or something. <laughs> or, um, I guess you could say, like, around the house slippers or whatever. Those are Converse. not... What do they call it? Converse, Yeah. Do not give a fursuit maker converse. Your feet will have blisters. Yeah, or... And then they blame the maker, and then that's no fun. Yeah, or the converse ones that are, like, the, they're cut at the ankle or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are not good shoes to have. What you're going to want to have are um, just good athletic shoes or tennis shoes. And the reason being is because those are going to give you comfort and support throughout the whole convention itself. And that's what you're going to want, because at the end of the day, when you're done suiting, however many hours it is, the last thing you want to do is, like, <laughs> have, like, what do you want? What is What did you say? Like, blisters or, you know, be in pain or anything, because um, your feet affect everything. It's going to throw off the balance in your back. It's going to mess up your knees. It's going to mess up everything, and you're going to be so frustrated. So, um your shoes affect everything. So make sure just mm -hmm. you send in the shoes that you want and then they'll go and they'll fix the, the paws around that. Mm -hmm. Now, just real quick, I see a lot of people that are like, oh no, I have the wrong shoes. Um, if your feet paws, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say, if your feet paws um, are already constructed and you haven't really had a problem, your shoes are probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to make sure that the shoes you're wearing are going to be comfortable. They're not going to be too loose, like Space says. If they are for some reason, you can always um, wear a thicker pair of socks. That um, helps cut down on blistering and stuff too. But yeah, definitely some kind of athletic shoe, something that you know that you can walk around all day in and be very comfortable is bonus, bonus. Another reason why a lot of makers will ask for tennis shoes like this is you can they're hard you can build off of them and they won't shrink your your shoe will still fit you when you add this fur if you use a tennis shoe it won't like with a canvas shoe or anything that's soft material yeah the glue sticks to it easier you don't have to hold it down as long but it might shrink your shoe and then you'll make these awesome paws but then they're not gonna fit you and that's no fun that's always a bummer 
Yeah, and then someone said as well, different people are comfortable in different shoes as well, and different people have different arches as well. Um, and then, like Apunya said, just depends on, um, you know, the, like, socks. I know there's um, good athletic socks out there. Like, I have certain socks that I like to wear for work um, where they're cinched at particular areas in the arch, so when I put them on, they're actually tighter at the arch itself, and that actually supports my foot. Um, so when I'm walking around, I actually don't, um, I don't hurt as much. And then I do wear inserts. So because I'm on my feet about eight to nine hours a day, so I got to make sure that um, I have support. So I'm actually building, when I'm building my first suit feet paws, I'm actually going to be building them off of what we call safer work shoes. Um, and they're waffle bottom shoes, so they're really nice. So depending on, it doesn't matter what surface I walk on, they'll mm -hmm. they'll never slip, which is great. That's good. That's and great. another thing, if you're commissioning another maker when it comes to shoes, um, if you have a medical condition or any kind of, I don't want to see deformity because everybody's feet look different. But like, let's say if you have a really big ankle bone, or if you have one of those bumps near your pinky toe, or if you're a diabetic like me. Your feet could be really sensitive. Sometimes you have to wear diabetic shoes or diabetic socks. Let your maker know so they can try to accommodate that. That's a very good suggestion. I think in my... I believe the shoes that I have in my feet paws are carpenter shoes. Um, they're, they're like a slip-on shoe. They're very soft and comfortable to to wear but they're a little big on me so i find that i have to put an insole in there just so my feet aren't slipping and i can avoid blistering as well mm -hmm. so the the construction aspects of a fursuit are equally if not more important than even the aesthetic aspect of your suit. If your suit isn't comfortable, it doesn't matter if it looks like, you know, a goddess made them, it, you won't be able to wear it. So always keep construction and vision and being able to breathe and your shoes and all that in mind, no matter what you're making. Um, Rebel Savant wants to know, what's a good shoe for dancing? For dancing, dancers should probably have smaller and more slender feet in general. I know just walking up an escalator with big feet can be a problem. So if you can find a type of tennis shoe that isn't very bulky, that can work. If there are actual dancer shoes out there, I don't know, I'm not a dancer. Um, but if there are, you can find those. If you have a pair of shoes that you're already comfortable in and you know won't hurt your feet if you wear them for long periods of time, you could use those. If you're worried about them shrinking, like I mentioned before, stuff the shoes as you work with them. Just stuff it with polyfill, stuff it with paper, stuff it with clothes, whatever. And then that way it won't shrink. But just more smaller feet, smaller toes, more slender, good grip at the bottom so you don't slip. If it were me, so like uh, Griffiness actually says high heels. Um, <laughs> it may sound silly. <laughs> But if if Griffiness is anything like what they're saying, um, they could be re referring to ballroom dancing shoes. And um, let me pull up an image here, folks. Let me show you what ballroom dancing shoes look like. Uh, male ballroom dancing shoes. And that's actually kind of... Sh if I were going to go and make ballroom dancing... If I were going to make dancing shoes for that, that's probably what I would do. So that's a ballroom dancing shoes right here. It has a heel on the back and allows for you to have elevated. So, um, and then it's very flexible too. So it looks like rough leather, but it's actually quite flexible. The only thing about that, if you're building on like fursuit toes and such, if you're going to put your own rubber on the bottom of the shoe, I don't know how you'd go about that with a heel. I've never done that before, yeah. but you could always just leave the original rubber on the bottom of the shoe. Like, let's say if I was furring this, I just wouldn't put fur here, and I would make sure the glue on the edge matches perfectly. But fursuit makers usually put their own rubber on the bottom. I don't know how you would do that 
with that particular kind of shoe. Yeah, that would but be kind of interesting. If you had one pair of feet paws for dancing and one pair of feet paws for performance, then you can always you know, just have the dancing paws open at the bottom like that. <laughs> yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I have not seen it before. Um, <laughs> if you had someone out there who was a prodigy for ice skating, if someone built a fursuit feet paw over ice skates. That would be really <laughs> cool. That would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty awesome. Just, that'd make for great comedy too. See now space now you get to be the first because how cool would it be to see an ice skating polar bear? <laughs> Rad <laughs> That would be way awesome. <laughs> Like you said, though, uh, it would be actually really hard, though, because, you know, y it would throw your balance off quite some, especially when you have to do maneuvers, because in those, some of those maneuvers to do, like, uh, a triple sow cow, you would have to figure out a way to be able to, because, like, when you do those maneuvers where you have to jump and hit the, you have to, to hit those maneuvers, you actually have to hit the ice to launch yourself into the air. And to do that, like, your toes would hit each other, and that would just totally throw you off. So you'd have to, like, literally learn a new way of ice skating, but with fursuit V-Paws. But that'd be really cool to see. <laughs> fursuits on say, ice. Look, <laughs> I was going to say, look, I've, I've seen Disney on ice. I know it can be done. If <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> can do it, so can I. That'd be so cool. That's the inspirational plaque I want to have on my wall. <laughs> you can do it, so can I. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Cork, like, dancing with the furs. <laughs> That'd be a fun panel. <laughs> oh, my God. That'd be way fun. So you'd have, like, a well-known dancer, and then you have, like, someone who just can't dance at all. So, for instance, my fiancé. And then you'd have, at the very end of the dance like panel that dancer like turn their partner into like a really good dancer but like with the like a basic you know something i can't <laughs> dance either my only dance moves are um what do you call it like the like the fax machine the sprinkler i can pull out any dance move you want out of thin air but those are the only ones i can do like those kind of moves <laughs> White white boy dancing. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely freaking loosely. Yep, that's how I do it. <clears throat> so what are you doing? You're just you're you're squeezing your toes. Yes, the <laughs> looks like this is one of the most tedious parts of making feet. You're waiting for the glue to dry. I don't have a low temp gun like I should right now. Mine died a little low while ago. Temp. So I am having to hold them down for forever. They're getting there, though. I just got the general position down. I have to wiggle them and trim them and all that and shape it out. But this one thing, like right now, it looks kind of wonky. One thing to keep in mind when you're making a fursuit, at some point as you're building, it's going to look horrible, especially with heads, because it's going to look like a duck, or it's going to look like something with dead eyes, and you just have to keep, <laughs> you have to keep working with it. It'll get better. Trust me. Like, if it looks ugly, slap some foam on it somewhere. It'll be fine. <laughs> so, for the most part, it's, um, it sounds like it's a layering process. Yes, it is. Now, in this third picture, um, over here where there's foam on the shoe, is that one piece of foam on the one inch where you're covering the shoe, or is that multiple pieces of foam that you kind of just glue together? I do one piece. What I do is I will take tape and newspaper, and I will... Like how you tape a fursuit head for a pattern, I'll tape the remaining piece of the shoe that doesn't have toes. And then I'll take that pattern off and put it on my one inch foam so I don't waste any foam and it's the perfect shape that I need for the remainder of the shoe. Oh, okay. 
Some people will take strips and they'll do it that way. Depending on the species you want, it could be shaped differently or if you want to do claw or anything like that. Um, but generally that's what I do for my the base of my feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so while she is waiting for her feet to dry, I am going to show you how to save some money on getting your supplies. Ooh, that's good. Do that. Because it is pretty awesome. Now, uh, where's the building guide? There it is. The blurb. I had to change. <laughs> I had to change some things. About the money saving guy, because I had coupons on there, and I'm like, oh, I don't want Michaels and Joanne's coming after me, being like, <laughs> you've got my coupons on your show, you owe me money. <laughs> I'd be like, uh oh, I'm broke, <laughs> so I can't. Um, so these are uh, money saving tips from Motsicles, and then I kind of just uh, shortened them down just a little bit to kind of make it a little bit easier, and then I've added some. Uh, links at the bottom, which you can find anywhere, so they can't get mad at me for that. That is just a generic link. And then I'll tell you additional ways to save as well. So, for instance, shoes. You can find these at thrift stores or use a pair that you already have. Meaning, if you have shoes that you're going to be throwing out, save those. Don't throw them away. Um, rubber matting, okay? Um, if you're on a tight budget, then just use E6000 glue. Tell them what E6000 glue is. E6000 is really sticky cancer juice. Um, it That's stinks. That's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. It's lovely, yes. This will... You could glue your hands together with this and you'd need it to get cut off to get it off. I have had I have some feet over there that I glued the rubber matting on with this. I've worn those feet... For a couple of years now, and there is no sign of it peeling off anytime soon. Um, I think more for less is actually the person that helped me figure out what kind of glue to use. It took me forever to get that piece of information. So I'll share it with you willingly. E6000 glue is the best glue for the bottom of your feet. Just wear a mask and make sure you're in an open room when you use it because with time it can be carcinogenous. You don't want it in your system. You want to live long enough to wear your, your feet. <laughs> yes, wear a mask, wear some gloves. If it gets on your skin, you know, don't lick your hands. Be, be smart. So my tip then would be use E6000 outside where there's a mm -hmm. fresh breeze, but still use a mask. And then mm -hmm. just use regular latex or non-latex gloves um, or dish hand, dish soap gloves too, because those are pretty good. Those aren't the best because there's not the best control on those. Um, but I prefer to use latex or non-latex gloves because those are kind of like dental gloves and those are what I prefer. Um, so yeah. Uh, I can see the possibility. That's what I use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, when you guys do buy fur, um, you can get a wire brush. You can go to the pet store if you want to and buy an expensive one, but you can also get them at the dollar store because they're literally a dollar, um, which is the better option. Um, if you're going to buy fur, and when you do buy fur, if you use higher quality fur, you can get free shipping from fabric.com. And if you place an order um, there, you can, over $30, you get free shipping. So that's always good. And, and your order is. will most likely be over $30, so that's just free shipping right there. <laughs> if you're getting fur that's under $30 online, I suggest not getting that fur because it's not going to be good. Um, I went to Joann's and I looked at fur just because I wanted to see what the uh, fur there looked like. <laughs> It was a joke. Um, <laughs> it was bad. It was terrible. It looked. It, they said fur fashion, and I'm like, "Oh, you silly people! You have no idea what fur fashion even is." Sometimes um, you can find uh, good to you know okay to good furs at you know um, Hancock's or Joann's, but you have to be there in person to see it and. 
you know, know for yourself online. I wouldn't buy for from those sellers online at all. Yeah. Um, you can look for deals, but be careful when looking for deals. There's often something wrong with them. If they're trying to clear it out, there's a reason for it. Um, so pull the roll out and see what it is. Um, I would advise running your hands through it and then even kind of lightly pinching the fur and seeing if it comes out easily because maybe there's something wrong with it and that's why they're trying to clear it out. Yep. Um, so that could be a thing. An electric shaver. She says you don't oh, need this. Oh. oh, what? What? Wait, hold on. I just want to add something in real quick. What? Um, I'm going to tell you in a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, going back to the wire brushes, um, some people already have them. Okay. Let's say if, if, if you're a pet owner, I mean, you might have a dog brush or something laying around. Just be careful with the brushes that you decide to use for um, your suit because a lot of the uh, grooming brushes say for pets, um, are meant to pull hair out. And you don't want to pull all the hair out of elements of your fur suit. <laughs> Only use a wire brush when you're making the suit and you need the wires to pull the hair out of the seams. When I am brushing my suits, like for maintenance, I use a boar's hair brush. Usually they're bigger than this. but um, Or you can hold your wire brush instead of brushing like this. Brush like this against the hooks to where they're not hooking into your fur. And don't uh, use the same brush on your fursuit as you use on your dog, please, or your suit's going to stink and get fleeced. <laughs> That's <laughs> gross. Don't do that. That's just gross. We don't need main fursuits. <laughs> For maintenance, though. I got though, this those, by the way. I'm about to do the one-inch foam part. Oh, nice. For a maintenance part, though, like if you're just like touching up your fursuit or if you're, you know, brushing your fursuit and getting ready to take it out, um for a spin and stuff. I actually, um, I carry a brush on me because sometimes my friends will ask me to brush their fursuit. I usually just carry a regular brush, like a hair brush with the little like mm -hmm. jelly tips on the end. And I just use that in general or like a comb. And I just, I pretty much, I call it my styling kit. And I just carry that on myself. Um, <laughs> and I style it because that's just, it's a little bit easier that way. Um, an electric shaver. You don't need this if you buy a short pile of fur for your toes or if you decide to leave your feet all in one fur pi or pile of fur. Alternatively, bleh, alternatively, there we go. Um, you can shave your fur with scissors, but this can be choppy if not done properly. Polyfill. This is an important one, okay? Joann's has a shat ton of polyfill. But they haven't. There we go. Look at her giant polyfill. Okay, Joanne. Has, Walmart. Yeah, Walmart has a lot of polyfill. Um, Joanne's has a lot of polyfill, but they have a lollipop. La They have Lolly a lot pops. of lollipops. Got a lollipops. <laughs> they got a lot of polyfill, but they have them in different increments, and then they will jack you for your money. And they have different versions, and they got crappy versions. Um, so just for $8, you can get a big old pile of polyfill. Or, if you don't want to spend $8 and you got a crappy pillow, <laughs> just rip open your pillow. But make sure it's okay with your parents. Um, yeah. yeah, or, you know, if you just got one of those decorative pillows that you just don't really care about, open one of those. That always helps, too. My um, son keeps chopping up all of our pillows. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, do you know what happened to that pillow? Oh, the dog must have eaten it. Okay, that must have what's happened. <laughs> just blame it on the dog. <laughs> and, like, just, like, rip up some scraps of something so it looks like the dog ate it or whatever. And, like, throw it in their their kennel. <laughs> um, and then scissors. You may not need expensive kind, um, but if you don't plan on making a lot of fursuits, the cheap kind will be fine for a one-time project. Um, because this is going to be a one-time project for fursuit feet paws, and if you don't continue on making fursuits, um, or since we're just going to be making essentially one fursuit for the whole year, and this is just going to be done in increments, we don't plan on buying really good scissors. Um, in our household, we have kitchen scissors, and kitchen scissors are kind of gnarly as it is because they got to chop through pretty gnarly items as it is, so we'll use those. <laughs> Take advantage 
Oh, what? Yeah, KitchenAids. Those are always nice. <laughs> um, deals. Take advantage of deals and weekly coupons. Michael's, Joann's, um, Hobby Lobby, they're always putting out weekly deals and coupons online every week on their website and on their app. And then sometimes if you join up on their club. So take advantage of all of those because sometimes they do that for their club and sometimes they do it for their online thing. And you can use them as many times as you want um, as long as the dates don't expire. And then sometimes even inside the, sh the stores themselves, they have even better deals depending on the sales themselves. And Go then... On holidays. On what? On holidays. Yeah, holidays are the best. Oh, holidays are just the best. So um, I was able to save. I went out and bought like uh, foam. I got stuffing, glue, and all the things that I needed. Instead of paying um, what the... And I also had supplies at home. So instead of the, the list with it being like about $70 for the materials that I probably... $70 to $90 with the list kind of projected, I ended up only spending $40 with the coupons and sales that I found in the store. So that's just an idea of what you could spend. It. Um, so go on to our website, or not go website, go on to our Facebook page or go on to our Fur Affinity and look for the money saving tips in the materials list and go through that and see what you have at home. Cross off what you already have at home. Then go for the items that you only need and then look at the coupons that you can find and then go for those items and try to see what you can save on. And that's what's going to help you. I'm going to say one thing also real quick on what I'm doing. I only tape half the shoe because the shoe is symmetrical and you don't need to waste tape. Just flip your pattern and you'll get the one whole shape that you need. You can do that for heads too if you know it's symmetrical, but if not, to be safe, you can do both sides. That's it. You can keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> yeah, pro tip. You've got lots of fursuits in the background. And a dartboard. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's the spider. There's the spider fursuit that we were talking about earlier in the show. That's really cute. Now, is um with the spider fursuit, is it a specific kind of spider, or just you just wanted to make one up and add crazy colors? No, that's um that was originally my girlfriend's persona until she changed it. It's a jumping spider. Oh. Okay. And we actually, well, she wore her to FWA last year, and a lot of people actually knew what the species was. I was surprised. That's very cool. I didn't label my tape. So I forgot what side went where. Always label your tape. Don't make mistakes like me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're farting when you pull the tape. Yep. Or nope, it could that's be just face. Nose. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how that's how we are over here. Space. <laughs> <laughs> Just so in awe with all this taping. Apparently, there's a <laughs> there's a differently member who's afraid of my or moths. I I don't remember. I did we interview them and did one of them yes. say that he was terrified of moths? I don't, I don't remember him saying that. But well, now we got to know who. Now I got to go back and watch it. <laughs> if he goes to FWA, I guess if I hear someone scream, I'll know. Well, or I could just ask on Twitter. There you go. It could be sh it could be Shia. In fact, I could just Which go one of y'all are scared of moths? I'm going to go I'm <laughs> going to go ask right now actually. I'm going to go tweet it. I got a moth on our show right now. Which one of you guys is scared of them? <laughs> <laughs> just imagine an actual moth like scaring the crap out of a cat pony. Do they have their own Do they have their own um I don't even know if they have their own, like, for, uh, Twitter. Individually they do, I think. But as a whole. Differently. So. Different. Okay. 
I guess I'll have to do it. Uh, at Shia Koft at Sozen something or other. Shyakoft at Sozen dot sky. <laughs> I actually hope that it's Sozen because he has the most entertaining. I don't know if it's a fake scream or if it's real, but it's the best. What is Sozen's at though? I, don't I think know it's, it's real. Because <laughs> I remember one year at FWA way back. I think it was the. Oh, I'm the poster. 2013. I got out my camera and asked him to like scream for me. Like on camera. I was really young. I don't know, but. And he did it. <laughs> what a gym. It's at Susan Riker and then the one uh, imaginary sky. I always forget their their ats. Okay, I labeled my tape this time. We're not gonna be a mistake. Alright, show Woo! us what you're doing. Show us what Show us. I, I taped half my shoe. I'm about to peel this off and stick it to my one inch foam. So I can know exactly how much foam I'm going to need instead of, you know, blindly throwing. So, uh, hold on, I'll label it and I'll cut it out before. So you guys can see. Oh, your, your fursuits in the background look gorgeous. Oh, thank you, dear. That's my smoker voice. <laughs> oh, that's the, uh, that's the macaw possum I was talking about. Oh. But. The Mc, the Mc, McPossum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One kind of crappy thing, I guess, to say about being a fursuit maker that isn't a professional, I guess, as you could say, like me, um, is that sometimes people will commission you or buy pre-made off of you, and then you never see the suit again. They never upload pictures or videos or anything, and most of the suits I've gotten commissioned from me are like that. They just disappear. Hmm. <laughs> I get good reviews, but then they disappear. So odd. Maybe it's just at um, conventions or something. You just aren't on your side of the country or something. That's true. I sent the tweet. Good. I did. All right. We're going to find Let's out. <laughs> Let's see if I can hold up this roll of foam. This is what I did. I... I put down the tape, and then I flipped it, and then traced the other side. So this is the shape I'm needing to glue down on the shoe. This is, like, the ankle area. This is the back that I'm going to glue. And then here's, like, the front where it meets the toes. It kind of looks like a Japanese anime t-shirt with wings. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Waylon Yutani? <laughs> I feel like I'm learning so oh. much. I want to get all craftsies now. <laughs> Gonna. I love seeing those events where people... I've only seen it happen at a con once. Well, heard about it happening where a bunch of makers will get together and bring a bunch of crappy supplies and they'll try to make a fursuit within like two hours. Oh, wow. That's pretty I've neat. Always, but it's always like hilariously crappy. And I really want to try doing that. <laughs> Anybody who makes panels at cons, do it, please. Do it at FWA. <laughs> Let that con have something good this year. Make a crappy fursuit in, like, two hours? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is that even so possible? Maybe... Anything's possible. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, what, and what reality is this? Hey, hey, didn't you see Zootopia? Yeah. Any mammal can do anything. <laughs> uh, I've not only seen Zootopia once, I've seen it twice. Hey. 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 See, um, I just placed it on, but see how much better that looks already? Oh, my. Believe that does that look ton different. Instead of, like, you know, weird-looking shootos. Shootopia. You're right. That really does fill it out nicely, and it looks more unified. I've seen newer... Fursuit makers just put little tiny foam toes on the end of a shoe and then fur it. And sometimes they can look good if it's like small and realistic, but most of the time you have to have something 
Because even if it, their toes are smaller, you still have all these lumps and bumps and designs and different textures that can show through under the fur. There you go. I don't know if hey, they can. Cool. I don't know if they can see it, but I, <laughs> I tried to make. I, I took a screen cap of the. Of the tweet that I sent them. <laughs> There's actually a couple of tweets there. There's this one. I was afraid of both. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one here that says, I really love making all my friends smile when I suit. Hell, mom had a bad day. I put on my suit and acted goofy, and she started laughing. And then there's one about yoga pants. <laughs> just, I don't know. I get these weird. I put on my yoga pants, and mom started laughing. <laughs> 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 and she said I was afraid of moths. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly, Mom. You're silly. Turn up the heat. It's hot in here. See if one of them has responded yet. It's I'm surprised possible. I haven't burned myself yet. It's possible. So, are either of you? I, I don't think space is, but Poonia, are you going to FWA this year? No, I'm not going to be able to make it this year, despite the fact that I I live closer to it now. Um, <clears throat> it's a little too short notice for me now, but next year is probably going to be a better possibility. Sweet. When is FWA? Next week. Next week, I think. Next week. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I actually thought it was this week, two weeks ago. I like <laughs> wrote my calendar wrong. Dang, I was there. I wow, gosh, I think it was 2014. I think two years ago I went there, and that was my first FWA, and I really enjoyed it. I think um, it was. Yeah, because I'm wearing the jacket of that theme, 2014. I remember in the show you mentioned it, it said you are going to college. So it was that one, yeah. Yes. Woo! That was a fun year. They did good that year. We're going to go ahead and open up the uh, chat to Q&A. Okay. We're going to open up the Q&A to um, questions for Mothsicle. So, folks, if you've got... You forgot, Space, you forgot the description rules. The description rules? What description rules? Oh, yes. Hold on. Um, we're going to open up the chat to, um, um, for the, for the stream. I didn't say my bad word. Hold on. Uh, they're, they're, they're confusing me. They, they haven't let me say my bad word yet. I was reading. I your naughty word. I was using a word out of out of context for. I was reading someone else's bad word. It didn't count. Okay, yeah. Let me finish, and I don't mean that in a naughty way. Um, okay, so <laughs> this is how Q and A works. You have to type it out exactly as I type it out, like that, and you got to make sure that you're. Questions are safe for work. Um, tonight's questions should be geared towards fursuit making for Motsicles. If you have questions for her about her artwork or about fursuit making, um, you can also ask questions to me and Punya if you like. Um, and then so forth and whatnots. And we'll go till about 9.20 ish and whatnots. 9.20, 9.30. Yeah. 9 29 30 <laughs> sure so we've got <clears throat> we've already got our question what is cuter a red polar or wait a polar bear or a red panda a red panda of course <laughs> oh, polar bear please baby polar bear <laughs> or a baby red panda oh gosh can we just put like the two babies together it's like no. be cute <laughs> you know what we will do we will ask facebook in fact i will ask twitter right now because we can, we can pull twitter we are going to have the answer to this 
soon. Age long question once and for all. <laughs> Ask the next question for me while I while I do this poll for them. Absolutely. Let me scroll back up a moment. <laughs> all right. Um what is your favorite flavor of freeze pop? It's not really a flavor, it's a color. Blue. <laughs> uh, it's also blue. Space understands. Like green. <laughs> Ew. I like a lime one. Mm. Tastes like Windex. Can't, you can't go wrong with blue, though. All right, this is for everybody. How do you guys like your popcorn? <sighs> That's a tough one. <laughs> um, I like them caramely, like caramel caramely? popcorn, like super gooey caramely. There, there was a while where I couldn't eat popcorn because the um, you know, like on the kernels, it has that really fine little layer of skin. Um, those would break off from the kernels as I was eating and it would irritate my throat and I would have asthma attacks. So there was a long time where I couldn't eat popcorn. <laughs> oh no! I can handle it a little better now. Um, little but, oh, gosh, I don't know. Popcorn's just, popcorn's just good all around. <laughs> Buttered popcorn, caramel popcorn, cheesy popcorn. I'll take it all. What about you, Moths? What kind of popcorn do you like? I like kettle corn, the sweet kind. Mmm. Kettle corn. corn. That is good. All right. Another question we got here is, um, as a male, I would like to make a female fursuit, but not to have it look like one of those fursuits. How would I do that? Don't give it boobs. <laughs> well, if you... Most... <laughs> Okay, if you don't want it to have, like, two separate pronounced boobs, like I've seen some suits, some of them are good, some of them are asymmetrical. But <clears throat> if you want it to look feminine without that, put a little bit of padding on the chest or use longer fur on the chest. Eyelashes are really good. Um, I put eyelashes on tap suit. Any kind of expressions you can work with, Adding a little bit of a lip to the bottom helps as well. Instead of having it a hard line inside the mouth, have it just a little bit lower on the lip. Just things like that. And color schemes can help too. Color schemes. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, uh, a couple of friends that have um, suits whose characters are androgynous when they, when they suit. Um, despite the fact that they may be male or female. Um, I came across the same thing with Punya. Um, she, when I draw her, it's different than suiting as her, because um, obviously when I draw her, I can make her a little more feminine looking. Um, mm -hmm. But suiting, I, I would often have people be like, oh, he's so cute. And I'm like, but I'm a girl. So <laughs> um, something real small that I did is I just went and bought a cheap... Um, like craft flower, and I pinned it to my fursuit head right yeah. above the ear. So it's it's very small touch to just accentuate that femininism without, I don't know, having triple D boobs. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'm not hating on anybody that has, you know, a, a suit with boobs, but sometimes they're just not done as well as they could, could be, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're having trouble to... Um, with the way that your fursuit looks, like if it doesn't look masculine enough or feminine enough, pra try um, practicing or working on um, your performance in suit. Because yes. just simple gestures, the way you walk and carry yourself can can really um, just put that image of in somebody's head like, oh, well, that's a female. Oh, that's a male. Um, another thing, which is more of a fun fact here, I could try to find the picture too. Crick, my steampunk dragon-esque suit, um, he's a masculine character, and I have a very feminine body shape. So what I did, I made pad Under Armour padding in my suit that I wear under his pirate clothes. And also, I walk as if I got a potato in between my legs. And I also stagger a little because he's a very drunk character. So 
it, performance can make or break uh, any kind of uh, gender or sex you want to add to your character. And I actually have a picture of the old muscle padding on my Twitter. I just gotta scroll through and get it. It's not too far down. But if you don't want to physically do the work of making, you know, a muscle suit to wear underneath, then you can just use performance like Punya said. That's really, really good advice. Um, we've got a uh, question, a suity, not suity, a uh, first suit question for you, Moths, um, from Darkness Wolf. And they want to know, will super glue work instead of the other glue? What was it, the E? E6000? I would yeah, say E6000. What, what about super glue gel? Probably be a better question. Like um, the... Um, for the for the rubber matting on the bottom, it depends on the kind of glue. If you read the back of the glue bottle, it should tell you what surfaces it works on. If it says rubber or plastic or anything like that, usually it should be fine. E6000 is the best. I've also heard Gorilla Glue can work, but it can expand. Uh, I don't have enough experience with any other brand, so I can't say for certain. But I'm sure if it says it works on rubber, then it should be fine. And I'm going to pop this link in the chat of my the muscle padding that I wear underneath Crick's outfit. It's just like a crappy mirror selfie with it, but you know. I personally like using epoxy, especially when you have to mix the two chemicals together because it's so go. much fun. I've heard mm -hmm. epoxy actually works really well for feet. I've never tried it, but I've heard about it. Um, that Asian fur wants to know what brand of foam would you recommend using for fursuit making? Oh, you're so racist. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there isn't really a, a brand because you can find it at different stores and locations and online. It's basically by size. Um, it's typically called upholstery foam. But sometimes, like Walmart or whatever that doesn't want to use big words, they will just put one-inch foam or half-inch foam. Um, high-density foam is another word you'll hear. I don't use extreme high-density foam, but I've heard makers use it for muzzles and such, and it works just fine. Just as long as it's not styrofoam, or if it's if you're using like a couch cushion that's been used, don't do that. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> No yes. couches, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have um, actually have a few used couch cushions stored away, like in my garage. But I only use them for pattern making. So let's say I wanted to make a plushie, I'll take a chunk of that and form the head shape, and then duct tape it and make you know the sh patterns that I need. So I'm actually not using the foam itself on a project, but I use it to figure shapes out. Mm. But other than that, just it's just rolled foam. You can buy it by the yard, or you can get it pre-cut at Walmart. But that's typically only for the one-inch foam. So there is no brand. It's just by size. If you type in one-inch upholstery foam or half-inch upholstery foam online, you'll see pictures of what typically you would find in stores. Before you ask your next question, I just want to say I'm so disappointed in everyone on this poll currently. <laughs> Why, what? Because the Twitter you're, one? Because you're leading right now. <laughs> I don't even do anything. <laughs> currently, Baby Polar Bear is losing to Baby Red Panda at 85%. <laughs> I'm 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 sorry, my friend. That's that's just the way of the world. <laughs> Ever, baby polar bears are so adorbs. You don't even know. You don't even know. Anyways, next question. Uh, next question we have is from Serenity the Bunny, and they would like to know: Are you thinking of doing f full suits anytime soon? I have always wanted to make a full suit, and I'm actually getting a commission. They actually already paid me the first payment, but I'm going to be starting it when I finish my wolf link head over there. Um, a Lucario full suit, but it's going to be made out of, like, minky and fleece and short pile fur, so it's 
I guess it's it's technically a full suit, but it's also a cosplay mascot. But I would love to make full suits. My mentality was I wanted to make my partials absolutely perfect before I attempted a full suit. But now mm-hmm. that I'm in college and I'm going to be graduating and becoming a teacher sometime soon, I'm not sure if I would have time to take full suit commissions. So I might just keep doing partials, and if I do make full suits, they would probably be pre-mades that I would sell in between teaching. If I have time in like during college, though, then I might try one. Yes. So there's that. So maybe um, as a short answer. <laughs> gotcha. Um, I've got a question for you about suit making. No. Okay. Um, with. I guess we'll skip it. No, okay. <laughs> Um, with all that you have made so far, what have you found, I guess at this point of, of your suit making, what have, have you found, um, has been, or comes across as the easiest for you and then the most difficult? The easiest suit I have made was Boomerang the Spider because she didn't have any ears and she didn't have a muzzle. (laughs) (laughs) She just had two fangs that I had to sew onto the face and her, I mean, her mitts, she didn't have fingers. The extra arms were the hardest part and I might have to remake those sometime soon for her. But as a whole, that was the easiest fursuit I've ever made and I actually made it for her as like a partial Christmas present thing. So it was fun. It was fun, but it was not hard at all to do. Big. And the hardest... Did you ask about hardest? Yeah, what what would have what has been the most difficult for you? Um the most difficult was probably a mixture between Kiwi the bat and the feathered raptor feathered raptor toucan hybrid that I made. Um, the toucan hybrid mainly because it was my first time working with all minky with such a complicated design. And with Kiwi the Bat, it was less construction and more so the fact that I had a lot of issues with the fur company and the product they eventually sent me was very, very bad quality and I had a horrible time shaving it. Um, Mm. And I had to remake the ears three times. So, uh, but that was the hardest suit and also the Raptor. But one of them was less, you know, the construction of more the fur company being a butt butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a fur media question here um, from Rebel Savant ninety nine. Will you be doing another fur media thing to show how to make other parts of fur suits? I plan on working with Mossicles to keep coming back throughout the year to continue doing more shows on how to work on other parts of fursuits as long as she is willing. Yep. If we're still going with that plan, I'm actually making a Dutch Angel Dragon. This is an Angel Dragon foot. (laughs) Then that is a yes. Yes. So we are planning on it. Um, As for the next segment, I will have to work with her to figure out what the next segment is. Um, Probably something that's a little bit easier. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Uh, maybe like a tail. Yes. Um, probably the last one that we'll do will probably be the head. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we'll probably do hands or at some point and stuff. So we'll work on um, segment by segment by segment throughout the year. And we'll kind of just do and those every once in a while. And I'll try to provide a comic tutorial for each one like I did for the feet. The only one I probably will not do is the head because that is a very extensive comic and also there is a tutorial that i followed with my new fursuit head making method that's already been made on youtube and i figured i would give a shout out to them i guess now anyway since i owe them a lot of improvement kloof suits on youtube has a lot of time-lapse tutorial videos and they that tutorial was the stepping stone between my old style that i had the beginning of last year and the new style that I have now. So if we make a head, that's the tutorial that I'll probably have in the list of tutorials that I'll figure to give people. 
And once again, uh, what was the name of that again? Kloof Suits. K-L-O-O-F Suits. Kloof Suits. Yes. There we go. All right. We probably have time for one more question here. Um, okay. Last question is from Nightmare Caster. Um, what is the weirdest fursuit you've ever seen or made? The weirdest one I've ever seen is, oh my god, you'd probably know what I'm talking about. You know that really, really muscly tiger that's been roaming around? Yes. <laughs> really, that one. Not saying that it's bad, I'm just saying that it's interesting. <laughs> Like, I, I like it, but at the same time, I'm like, I like to look at it and just look at all those shapes. Hmm. I really like muscular characters. I really do. And I don't see a lot of suits that are like that in that level. I, it wasn't, the one that I've seen wasn't terribly weird, but it's definitely one that I have never seen before. Um, but it was a koi fish. And I wish I would have taken a picture of it because I have never seen them since since that one convention. <laughs> uh, I can't think of the weirdest uh, I haven't seen any like super weird fursuits in person yet. I'd like to see, because more or less, I like the weird ones, because then it gives me a reason to take pictures of them and kind of just keep looking at them, and then kind of <laughs> then the kind of like giggle. Um, I would really like to see a fursuit or a fursuiter do like a Mr. Potato Head type of a fursuit, where you can just like rip off an item and then take it <laughs> and stick on another item, or like rearrange their face in such a way they'd be kind of fun. So Gosh, that sounds like something that. Um, wow, I can't remember his name. He's that really scary clown dancer. Yeah. Starts with an F, I think. People in chat, you know. Come on. He dances like he breaks his whole body. Flinch. Flinch. There we go. Flinch. Hello. I was about to say Flint, but that was really wrong. <laughs> I bet he could <laughs> make a suit like that. Is that a first suitor? Oh, yeah, Flinch, you gotta do it. Tell me that's not a fursuiter. It's a fursuiter, oh yes. No way. Yes. I don't have to look this up on YouTube. Look up Flint. You know what? He's a gem. Um. Yes. I think I just found the picture of, of, the, of the, the koi fish. <laughs> uh, koi joy. Koi joy. Send it to koi me. Koi joy. Send it to me real quick so I can pull it up um right. yes i'll be answering notes on um fa now that my time has opened up for the rest of the week um folks we do apologize we weren't able to get to the rest of your um Gosh. questions for the duration of the show we can only get to so many questions and um, we were only able to run so long for this show in general um, but we do appreciate for all those who are able to turn out for this show um, let me see this picture. And if anybody has any more questions, especially ah. if they help making the suit or the feet, note me on FA on my art or on my first suit account. I'm always willing to help people that need it because I know not enough makers have the time to help, and I do. So if you have a question, note me, and I'll try to get back to you <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> yeah, isn't that awesome? I love it. <laughs> Why are they wearing sandals? Oh. You know, <laughs> it'd be worse on the beach. Feel, and I know that I know that Curtis is gonna, or sorry, Felix. I shouldn't say his real name. I know that Felix is gonna totally be like, say something about this. But it'd be better if the fish was wearing Crocs. But <laughs> of all the things, they had to wear those sandals. I, I mean, come on. I'm tail. I think the tail is my favorite part. <laughs> uh, really, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. those, those, whiskers. those judging fish eyes. All right. 
Um, Moss, I'm going to go ahead and pop your um, FA page in the chat again for those who might have missed it before, um, in case anybody has any questions they want to send to you. All right, and I just finished this one right at the end, so... Well, let's take a look. There you go. I might bulk out near the toes a little more if the fur doesn't lay right, but, like, more in here. Other than that, though, there's the foam. So I'm excited to see what your fur job will look like. Um, and we're doing, we're giving six weeks. I know it's more than we need as far as time-wise goes, because obviously you finished one foot in, w in an hour and a half. Um, other people filming. Think so. um, but it may take more time for others. <laughs> um, however, I do have a wedding coming up in four weeks, and so I'm taking two weeks off for, for media in April, from um, April 1st to April 14th. So, Well, that's fine, because I'm actually going to be out of town working as well. And going to your wedding. <laughs> yeah, so we're just coming out. So uh, she's going to come out. We're going we're gonna to have a gay old time out here. In, in Save some Oreo cake for me. There you go. <laughs> so it's gonna be fun, and then and then I'll continue making first or er, first suit feed pods. It'll be lots of fun. Um, so, so when we when we come back, we'll have to make sure that we have lots of wedding pictures and festivities and things to share with you all because it's gonna be a grand old time. You know, oh my god, I have a surprise for Punya that I haven't told her yet. I'm actually gonna wait until she gets out here. Because <laughs> I'm taking you somewhere special that you don't even realize we're going yet. <gasps> okay, keep yeah. it a secret. I like yep. surprises. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. All right. Okay. All right. So, folks, thanks for tuning in for tonight. Um, I will upload this show. I promise by Thursday or Friday. Moth Skulls, thanks for coming on to our show and teaching us how to make fursuit feet paws. And we will have you back on to our show in about five to six weeks for the follow up. We'll re all, yeah, we're, we're all going to showcase our feet paws. And folks, if you decide to make your own feet paws, we want you to share your pictures with us on Facebook. Punya, unplug and plug back in. Share, showcase your, uh, or share your pictures on Facebook or Twitter so we can all see it. Um, we want to see your creations, whether they look crappy or whether they look good, because God knows that mine aren't going to look that great either. Um, okay, so. Exactly. They're going to look as good as they can get. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, without that, other than that, folks, you guys have a great night, and we'll see you next time. Night, guys. Good night, night. and thank you. Good night.